who's more compassionate? The, the stern father with boundaries who maybe isn't the cool dad, or the compassionate mom who spoils the child? Only in this instance, we're not talking about uh, the most disastrous result being a petulant toddler, but we're talking about grown, lost adults finding themselves exponentially more likely to end up in prison, depressed, and part of a demographic that lives up to a 40% attempted suicide rate, both pre and post op. <laughs> So question of the day, these days, of course, it's very common advice to be healthy. People want to be, yes. they're more health conscious yeah. than ever. And uh, you don't want to be injecting yourself with copious amounts of unnatural hormones. No. Why do you think that logic all of a sudden goes out the window when it comes to hormone replacement therapy for transgenders? And you know what? let's take the kids out of the equation and puberty blockers. We've talked yeah. about that. I'm just talking about adults. Have you actually taken the time to think of the toxic impact that adding exogenous estrogen to the male body could have? Hmm. Let me know. Uh, this is something we don't really talk about a lot. We talk about what people want, what the societal ramifications. What about the potentially early cancerous graves? You let me know. If you think that's yeah. compassionate, I think you're a sociopath. Okay, so. <laughs> I know we got a lot of we got a lot of uh, a lot of heat as well as a lot of uh, positive feedback for when the transgenders attack uh, right. video, which we didn't ask for. No. I am not the hero you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the signal just a severed. <laughs> we'll bleep it. It's oh, fine. Yeah, we'll oh, Papa, they yeah. must need me. And there's a fidget spinner. So, <laughs> uh, for context, for those who missed it, of course, at the recent uh, change my mind uh, w w the women's march that we did, uh, I was assaulted by not one but. Two, count it, two <laughs> transgenders. Ha, 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 roll clip. Hey, you're going to come sit down? No, no. My side. Nope, nope. Nope. And I'm sick and tired of this fucking debate. Men need to respect women. Period. You Piece of living garbage ass dumpster mm. fire trash gum on the bottom of my shoe. A country where guilty until proven innocent. Innocent. That's yes, so funny. Be rotting in a jail, but I I know of. Ooh. <laughs> so, so when you Steve take Seagal, funny, every time. Clip club. when you take into account that only 0.6 percent of Americans identify as transgender, statistically, being assaulted by two, it's like I hit the mega ball yeah. crap pot. Wow, <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, so at this, lucky. at lucky. this women's march, 0.6 percent of the population committed 100 percent of the felonies. Mm. It should be noted, by the way, that the sample data has a margin of error of uh, plus or minus. Zero percent. Also, it's entirely made up by me. So it's very reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah. something else that's, that's important. When we actually sort of looked into wider media coverage, and I want to get into the empirical, obviously, some of the data that might yeah. surprise you. Um, but it seems anecdotally at first, and I think you probably know this, but you don't necessarily know how it correlates with statistics. It would seem that the transgender population uh, has been very much overrepresented in the realm of public. Um, I believe the I believe the clinical nomenclature here is public meltdown childlike freakouts. Yes. You won't give me my fing money back. Excuse me, sir, there's a young man in here and you want to go. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. Once again, ma'am. Ed Sheeran, ma oh boy. Once again, ma <laughs> Ed Sheeran at the counter is just no, uncomfortable. Yes, sir. Once again it's ma'am. Motherfucker, take it outside. If you want to call me sir again, I will show you a fucking sir. Motherfucker. Well, uh, how can you? That's exactly my point, sir. Maybe pleading guilty? What? Oh, oh Don't Lord. touch me. Don't touch Go. me. Ah! Gone. Hey. Stop! Do you mind? That's the, that is the transgender male to female who was demanding that uh, other women wax his beautiful balls. Her beautiful balls. That's right. Ugh. Get away! Get the fuck away Her from me! Feminine, away wonderful, from me. hairy, hairy and balls. Whoever here want to fight, we can oh. fight. I'm in the parking lot. I've been in the parking lot, ready to fight. Do a goddamn sir walk around the mother in the world with a goddamn TV. You wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would have told you I was a goddamn sir. A sir don't walk around nowhere with no goddamn titties and ass on their back. Or you want to be associated with other than you. You and the horse that you rode Apparently. on, you funky, sour smelling motherfucker. <laughs> I was gonna leave you the fuck alone. Now I'm gonna cause a goddamn scene, you son of a bitch. You <laughs> gonna take these goddamn shoes back today because any goddamn girl who comes up in here but after me with titties and ass on her motherfucking back will be respected and she will not Goodness. be called a goddamn. Damn, sir. Fuck you and your mama, your sister, your brother, your uncle, and your cousin, you bitch wow. ass nigga. Fuck you. Oh, Take this shit back, mama. Goodness. I'm a ma'am. I don't pay enough. I'm a ma'am. My ID say female. Is that a Jimmy Fox rude. character? No, you're a pro now. 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 See your police 
Know your pronouns. Cracking a pronoun? Know your fucking so. pronouns. It's a world out here. <laughs> Stupid. It's a world. Suck my dick, like you said, man. Oh, come on. Suck my Wait, but that's. It actually sets a better precedent. Oh, this one's not oh. funny. It's, it's, it's yeah. Wow. That's an axe. And I don't think the previous sentence was actually. Oh, fuck. Fudge. I think she hit with a. Yeah. Oh, God. Are you serious? So, what the I, hell? I would have to say, my, my conclusion there is that those are some very hormonally balanced people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was ready stable. for that last clip. Well, I know we know yeah. that anecdotally because these stories happen all the time, but what, what does the empirical data tell us? And I think it's important. We often hear, right, that, that transgender individuals are they're more likely to be the victim of violent crimes. But here's something important. That's what we hear about a lot, not them perpetrating the crimes. Most of these reports, they, they just list the number of transgender individuals who've died violent deaths at some point in the past year. So really, yeah. actually, as far as I could tell, it all stems from one tracking study from one place. I want to read you the direct quote from humanrightscampaign.org, a leftist website. In 2008, advocates tracked at least 26 deaths of at least uh, uh, of transgender non-conforming people in the United States due to fatal violence. Some of these cases involve clear anti-transgender bias. Well, I would think all of them would. <laughs> in others, the victim's transgender status may have put them at risk in other ways, such hmm. as forcing them into unemployment, poverty, homelessness, and or survival sex work. So of the 26 what? deaths, when you actually look at them cited, it, most of them they have no relation to the victim's transgender status. They hmm. could have been killed in a carjacking or a robbery, but because they're trans, it's violence against the trans community. It could have just as likely been violence against the car-possessing community, oh or gosh. as it's known, yeah. Detroit. <laughs> Let's contrast this with the hard numbers that we have that are undeniable uh, in relation to transgenders being the ones who commit the crime. So yeah. uh, Lambda Legal, a pro-LGBT legal organization, they report that one in six trans individuals have been in prison. Oh my gosh. Now, we do need to have some scale here, right? Some context. So let's compare that to the average lifetime incarceration rate for cis men, commonly referred to once upon a time as men. It's one in nine. <laughs> yeah. And it's far higher uh, than for cis women, which is one in 56. One wow. in six for transgender individuals, compared to one in 56. So see, ladies, trans women, they're just like you. <laughs> Yeah. Knock, knock, who's there? Just a trans male to female at your porta potty with a one to six chance of committing a serious crime. I mean, I just can't. <laughs> it's like the big bad wolf oh huffing and puffing and blowing the porta potty next door. The point is, build your house out of brick. Why would you do it out of no. straw or yeah. sticks? It doesn't Silly. make any sense. And that pig had to carry the weight. I think the other one should have been eaten yeah. by the wolf. Yeah. That's what the takeaway is here. And there's another <laughs> meat segment. Actually. Another long-term study in Sweden they, uh, it found that transgender individuals were increasingly likely to be convicted of, of any crime, including violent crime, wow. specifically following sex reassignment surgery. Now, Jeez. leftists would probably have you believe that that's because the entire police force are transphobic. You know, <laughs> tucked, don't shoot. I understand that was a me, but it was <laughs> not entirely <laughs> accurate. Oh, 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 Here's the truth, and this, it, it, even for people who are the most progressive in the world, it doesn't stem from a place of hate. Sometimes they get confused with the, exactly. as to whether you're a, a woman or a perceived woman, but then you snap them right back in line by demanding they then they yeah. understand it. <laughs> yeah. The confusion. Exactly. Is like, the fog lifts. And, oh, well, there's truth. She's ladylike. So <laughs> let's let's form a hypothesis here. You know what? Not even like. Let, I just want to pose a question. Could could mm -hmm. transgender behavior that we see here possibly be linked to the fact? No one talks about this. That we're injecting these people with unbelievable amounts of hormones. Mm -hmm. the, the long term effects of which we don't really know. And what we do know definitively at this point is is, is not good. Yeah. So keep in mind that this is something we talk about all the time in society, that, that, that we're warned about injecting unnatural hormones. Look yeah. at the current discourse around anabolic steroids in sports, right? All mm -hmm. kinds of warnings, and, and a lot of them are accurate. They can harm fertility, psychological well-being. The list goes on and on and on. Now, hell, let's look at the discussion regarding hormones in chicken. Yeah. In milk. They think they believe that young women are getting their periods early because of hormones in milk, but then you realize they don't put hormones in milk in the UK, and so it doesn't really make any sense because <laughs> titties just get bigger. One of the primary <laughs> reasons true. that people even eat organic or they avoid BPA plastic is because of what's referred to as, they often, if you read any of these mom green blogs, they mm -hmm. refer to them as endocrine disruptors. Yeah. Uh, often I think the term is xenoestrogens, and that these chemicals mm -hmm. allegedly mm -hmm. mimic estrogen in the body, which when they uh, are, are, are basically provided in excess, they're believed to be cancerous. Yeah. Now, when That's it comes to changing genders, 
However, using the exact same hormones, injecting them directly or taking them sublingually in a pill form, suddenly we're pushing them on kids and there couldn't possibly be any health risks hmm. because the science is out. Well, you know what? Actually, that's not the case. We'll get into some more science, but first hit the notification bell, hit all notifications uh, because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot and uh, do subscribe to the show on iTunes as well if you haven't uh, joined Mug Club. That's yeah. the place where you can watch all of this. Uh, should we be banned? New videos every weekday at 9 Eastern. 9 Eastern. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So get let's, right. let, let's get into this. Um, the, the I think est estrogen is something we should talk about in the psychiatric problems. Yeah. And, and does that relate to this, this statistically undeniable and, and startling, honestly, the more I looked into it, violent behavior? Um, a few different things. Well, we can start with a estrogen, progesterone. These are seen as feminine, horm uh, feminine hormones. Obviously, men have these hormones as right. well, but in lower amounts, just like women have testosterone, but in lower amounts. So high progesterone uh, has already been linked to suicide. Right, progesterone is included uh, quite a bit in male to female transitioning therapies. And we've already talked about the 40 wow. something percent attempted suicide rate pre and post op for transgenders. Right. Women already have a higher rate of depressive psychological disorders than men. And sometimes this is thought to be linked to complicated, obviously, this is a simplification. I, right, I yeah. I'm not an endocrinologist. There are only a handful of really good ones in the country, but it's often thought that it's linked to the interactions of estrogen and, and female related hormones. Now, we also know that when people go off steroids, there's no argument about this, they can become depressed, they can become right. suicidal, they can become very moody. Often it could be perceived as bipolar disorder. And this is something that is important. Again, the endocrine system is, is so intricate and complex, and one hormonal signaler will affect another one, and, and it's, it's really difficult to, to sift through all of it. But they all do play a role, a yin and yang, as it relates to other hormones in the body. So a good example of this is the thyroid, right? A lot of yeah. people know this who have hypothyroid. Every single fat person out there uses that as an excuse. I have a thyroid thing. <laughs> thyroid it doesn't make you 900 you a, pounds. Yeah. It doesn't put you on a TLC <laughs> show, but I understand it may help you. You may be holding some water weight. Anyway. You have an ice cream thing, not yes, a thyroid yes. thing. <laughs> you, have an, you have an ice cream truck thing. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of true. So the thyroid <laughs> plays a big role in people's emotions, uh, depression. Yeah. Thyroid levels are, are dramatically affected by estrogen. And as a matter of fact, sometimes people with thyroid disorders are misdiagnosed very often as bipolar or as having some kind of a psychiatric condition yeah. because they manifest themselves the same way. Add on top of that, uh, that male to female transgenders, they face a... Uh, Outside of hormones, if you have kids, warning, 35% drop in ability to achieve orgasm. Oh, hey, by no. the way, mm -mm. can anyone here mm -mm. guess the orgasm rate for cisgender men? Mm, that's, that's it's not a trick high. question. It's 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, oh, we're easy. very easy <laughs> to please. And by the way, not, not to mention, of course, this is really important. The connection between estrogen and, and breast cancer in women is well established, right? Yeah. If a woman has breast cancer, one of the first things they put them on is, uh, is uh, I think it's... Um, Anastrozole, mm -hmm. it's, it's an aromatase inhibitor which prevents people from converting uh, certain hormones to estrogen. That's what a lot of mm -hmm. bodybuilders take, yep. or people who uh, men who have naturally high estrogen levels. It's something that prevents uh, hormonal signalers from converting to estrogen. That's one of the first things they give to women with breast cancer. Now, here's something else a lot of people don't know. Considering that breast cancer is is, is rare in men, but yeah. it does happen, it hasn't really been largely studied but they have studied it more recently. And men with just high levels of estrogen, we're not talking about people who've actually injected estrogen in trying to become a woman. We're talking right. about men with slightly abnormally high levels of estrogen. They had a multiple increased odds ratio of breast cancer over men who wow. had normal levels. Significant. Crazy, the yeah. same thing applies, by the way, to other forms of cancer, prostate cancer. It's the same reason you go on any health blog that people are drinking from Nalgene bottles and that stupid, awful swill bottle that you can't put <laughs> ice cubes in. I don't understand it's it. Terrible. Just get yourself an old school classic Stanley thermos, you <laughs> self-important, affected prick. So, but we get it. We all see you at the airport being eco-friendly. Look, I don't buy bottles yeah. of water. I'm the guy who commented on Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> Just get one with a wider mouth. It's easier to clean and you can put ice in it. What it are you, is. a European? You don't want ice in your water? Oh. We're better than Europe. That's why we left. We are. Keep in mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, just average men with high estradiol levels, not people injecting it directly into their ass or popping pills. I yeah. think it's important for people to note here. So we've talked about psychiatric conditions. We've talked about the increased rate of cancer. We know that. Now, is there a direct correlation or causation with the one in six chance of ending up in prison as opposed to the one in 50 something for women? We don't know necessarily because we haven't studied all this. This is a new frontier. But what we do know is definitive and it's not Good. So again, we're just posing a question here based on the data that we have. 
undeniable data that shows us both male and female transgenders are dramatically more likely to commit serious crimes, violent or otherwise. The somewhat speculative, again, but cumulative data tells us that attempting, like you said, Gerald, to alter the norm, normal hormonal profile, yeah. it not only dramatically increases the likelihood of cancer and disease, but also serious mood disorders and behavioral disorders, which I don't know why this is controversial considering it's, the Chris Benoit be, scenario right, we were talking yeah. about it. You've heard the term roid rage, right? We yeah. know that hormones affect behavior and they can inflict behavioral damage on people. So could it be that all of these health effects we know are connected to hormones could possibly be contributing to the unusually high level of freakouts that we have personally encountered from transgender individuals. And this brings me to my biggest gripe right here. We do have to get going. Yeah. Um, my biggest gripe with the whole framing of the LGBTQ AAIP and a silent number two issue is speci and specifically the hate speech policies uh, of, of big tech and the DNC is that it presumes that only the left has compassion for these individuals. But if simply encouraging people to do whatever feels right and to live their truth, whatever the hell that means, you rube, can objectively, <laughs> and if it's something that can objectively and undeniably cause irreparable damage, I, is that really compassion? Let me ask you, what's, who's more compassionate? The, the stern father with boundaries who maybe isn't the cool dad or the compassionate mom who spoils the child? Only in this instance, we're not talking about uh, the most disastrous result being a petulant toddler, but we're talking about grown, lost adults finding themselves exponentially more likely to end up in prison, depressed, and part of a demographic that lives up to a 40% attempted suicide rate, both pre and post op. So it may be a question that's uncomfortable, but maybe this worldview that's being pressed out there is progress isn't so compassionate after all. Hey there, YouTube viewers. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell if you're already subscribed to this channel because that lets you know when new videos come out and they don't show up on the YouTube search feed. Also, there are videos playing in boxes here. Click one of those. Just of all the things that I just mentioned, all you have to do is one. And if you don't, I will run for the United States presidency under the 1 1,064th percent Cherokee party. I have yet to pick my VP.